Welcome to Table 1, Central Coast Wind Network. What I thought I would do with you today is actually have a look at the sorts of things that we've done with our regional project. So we've had three sort of separate activities that all, all work together. Um, and I'll get someone here to choose which one they'd like to talk about first. DVD. DVD? <laughs> okay. As a part of the review process, I found that most of the, the people I was talking to were, ta were saying that senior management and the CEOs all felt quite comfortable with the concept of, of CDC and, and what it meant to implement that sort of process. But they were saying that their frontline staff, in fact, were not ready and they, they could see that but weren't sure what they could do. The reference group, when I took that information back, decided that we could probably do like a, a very high level look at what CDC means for the frontline workforce. So, and I've just put down here what we, what we did. So we got a couple of um, filmmakers to come in and pitch, I guess, their ideas to us and, and how much they would charge us to, to put that together. Then we, we chose out of those people and then we got a couple of local providers to provide the um, intelligence for that, a couple of consumers. Um, we filmed it at, at RDA, Regional Development Australia, who've been our lead agent for the, the regional project. Um, and we're putting that together at the moment. So, the, um, so it's a very high level look at what CDC looks like for a frontline staff member. So the whole idea of customer service and putting that person in the, in the primary role. Any questions about that one? Well, we thought three to four minutes, but they've got nine to 11 minutes of really good footage. So I guess I'll take that back to the reference group on Tuesday and get them to have a look at it. We've also had a quality assurance person, Lorraine Poulos from, um, I think she's her own business, has actually sort of made sure that we've got the right messages, um, that it's actually suitable for the audience. The first draft that we did, in fact, was probably more suitable for consumers. So we sort of, so it was a good product, but it wasn't really what we set out to make. So we've sort of had to tweak that a bit and also make sure that we've comfortably dealt with community and residential services equally so that it will work for everybody. We'll make 2,000 copies and they'll be freely available. So each satchel at the Elephant in the Room conference will have one of those in it. So shall we move to this one next? Are you going to set up a new tool? Yes. So yeah. it's a tool for, for um, staff to understand. That's right. Just that very first little aha moment. Ah, this is what they're talking about. What's your... Um, Why do you think they're... Concerned? I was going to say, well, what's your sense in the region about how workers um, feel about consumer directed care? Like, where are they starting from in terms of taking this approach on? Okay, well, I guess some staff... It just depends where you go really. So some people are, are really good and I can kind of feel that the culture of places when I move through them. Um, others probably don't have too much idea. They're, they're probably just used to working the way that they've always worked. So I guess it's really difficult to generalise that. So it's a mixed. But just about all the providers have said they would welcome this. You know, maybe as something that you do in induction or at a recruitment session or something like that. Yes. Yes. Sorry? Doing anything for consumers. They understand This this will work really well for that. Yeah. 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 Then that's so the um, government's role. I know this is government, but I mean, I would have thought it was more a central body doing the consumer. Wouldn't there be? Coders, Coders got a project uh, to inform consumers about CDC, so there's a booklet about to be released which steps through the CDC process. Uh, we're also doing peer education around the state, so Coda will be training older people to provide peer education sessions on CDC. So that will be starting in May. Uh, we do hope to do more stories. We're setting up a website which will be live in a couple of weeks. And, um, a number of organisations are already offered to provide links to some stories they've done on DVD. Best experiences, I think that's probably the best way to get across to And you're welcome to any of our footage as well. Yeah. Because there's lots more than we will use. You said the first one for consumers. Yeah. Oh, look, when I, when I watched it, I just kind of went, that is fantastic. But 
we've yeah. just missed our audience just, a bit. Does it so, make a distinction in terms of the clinical needs of the, of the resident, like uh, consumer directed care or someone um, who's got dementia is going to be quite different to consumer directed care for someone? We've know, tried not to delve into too much detail, so it's okay. not really a teaching tool. It okay. really is just that. So that's oh, the problem, I, think. I, I get it. With the breakdown of the high care and the low care. The problem is that you've got staff who've done the low care care, which was care they were really comfortable with, and that now going into locked mental wards and just living yeah, in distress yeah. because they can't cope. The Not appropriate to that. It really yeah. is just that initial, oh, I get it now. Yeah. yeah. This is my customer and, and I'm going to do... You know. I think that's the problem that you're gonna, that we're, that's happening with the workforce is the nature of the change in the funding model, the breakdown of the low care and the high care. Um, now people are being exposed to parts of the with that they never had to work with before, but they're now expected to go and do that. But they might be better off moving into the community. Perhaps I think that's they're going to be the spot on against the um, disability. They're going to borrow yeah. the money. Yeah. 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 yeah, people are staying in nature. Okay. Then we're going to launch this at the Elephant in the Room conference, which Rhonda is speaking at. What's so special about this conference is this is a conference put together by providers. So it's been... One of the aims, I guess, for me for this was to actually bring, bring providers together to network more, to hopefully leave together some little working parties for when I'm gone to actually look at implementing the regional workforce strategy. Um, because it's put, been put together by providers, um, there's a real ownership, would you agree with me, Verity, from the... From from the community about owning this conference. So we actually got a very big group of people who are interested from all sorts of different um, backgrounds actually, so not all providers. We had Regional Development Australia, State Training Services, quite a number of different people in the room. So a couple of very big high level meetings to say what do you think of this idea, what should it look like. Then it wasn't going to work with such a large group to keep going like that, so then we broke into five groups. We looked at the five sorts of main things that were coming out of the reviews, which were workforce development, leadership and management, um, clinical and governance was, was one of the areas that they talked about, training quality and the future, so things like, like CDC. Um, then those, we actually got little groups that formed to look at each of those, and so those groups looked at the abstract, they did all of that sort of thing to sort of decide who'd be on. So during that process, it was very much, is this something you'd want to come and see? Because it's not my choice, it's your choice. So that's looking really quite good. We, we needed at least 150 people to cover costs. It's been subsidised by WIN, so we're able to make it really affordable. It's $330 for two days, which is really, really very good. It's a gorgeous terrigal, so I'm not actually really doing a sales pitch. We've got over 200 people now, and we'll have to cut off at about 250 otherwise the groups would just be unmanageable. Um, we've called it Elephant in the Room because we want to talk about some of the things that, that sometimes people are not. What is the elephant? There are lots of elephants. We came up last week at Dalton High Okay. Okay. What is the elephant? The plural, the elephant. Elephants. <laughs> Have a look at the program. So we've got one session called Sex, Drugs and Rock and Roll. Um, lots of different panel discussions. The discussion about registered nurses and why, why they don't necessarily stay in aged care. Um, so we've got from the university, a university person, people who've worked in aged care and who have stayed and the reasons they've stayed, people who've perhaps moved on and maybe why they've moved on to try and actually analyse that. Because we actually have our health department who are not able to take the number of graduate nurses that are coming out and yet some of my providers saying I can't get one. So I'm going, okay, we've got a disconnect here. Let's examine it as a region. Um, and, well, not always, but we, it's certainly one of the things. So those sorts of elephants we want to kind of get out in the open. And, and what we've asked for in each of the abstracts is, is a definite takeaway message. So don't give us lots of research and, and philosophy. Give us something we can take away and do tomorrow. So hopefully that's what will happen. Also, as a result of the reviews, we saw, I saw the need for a lot of different things. So all of those, those five things that I talked about were all coming out. And I thought in one year, and with $80,000, I would only be putting out spot fires here. 
So we actually looked at the fact that we needed a, a workforce strategy that was regional, that looked at each of those things. So we've actually got a consultant who's put together, is putting together the strategy for us. Well, we actually want to call it an action plan and not a strategy because we don't want it to sit on a shelf. So she started off and so far we've got the, the summary interviews. So she did a number of interviews with people asking them what they felt were the issues and maybe what they thought were some of the solutions. So we got that summary report and I've now sent out a survey, further survey that you would have got, that we've tried to get as many stakeholders as possible to answer, um, to then sort of work through that more thoroughly. I guess to confirm or dispute what came out of these initial interviews, because this was a, a lot fewer people. So some of the things, and I think they're transferable sorts of things that we thought. This report, I'm not sure about that actually. I didn't know about the, the intellectual property, but I'm really happy be, certainly to share any of the findings. Yeah, absolutely. So some of the things that she's come up with um, are that the uh, Central Coast be a centre of excellence for aged care and that we set up sort of a little bit like a Heart Foundation tick but you know what do you have to be to be part of that centre of excellence and how does a consumer know that you've done certain things so that was one of the things um, and then a public relations campaign about that so it's the whole attraction issue why, why won't people work for us let's actually do something to spell the myths that, that surround aged care. A centralised training portal because training quality has been really shit. But look, I'll leave this here and if you want to have a look. So, you ask somebody about aged care and, and watch what their face does often. Is that a myth or is that the facts? Well, no, there are a whole lot of different different roles in aged care. Yeah. yeah.